Hi, everybody. Uh, I know you've heard a lot about wearables so far, and I wanted to ask a provocative questions. Uh, how many of you thinks, think the wearables today don't do really much? Oh, that's quite a lot. And how many of you, th this is an article from Wired uh, from um, 10 days ago. How many of you think that uh, medical um, devices, I mean, the ones that you've seen if you had the opportunity, are quite ugly in terms of design? Yeah, if you, not many of you have used medical devices. So this is a big problem, because on one side, you have consumer devices that are very beautiful, but they're very basic. On the other side, you have medical devices that are powerful, but nobody wants to wear. And uh, this has been a problem for quite a while. And um, we, we've faced the, the same problem in, uh, in our company, so I, I'll, which is called Empathic. I'll tell you a little story before. And uh, we have to go back to 2007, and it's the MIT Media Lab, which is uh, quite a center for innovation. And they did the first wearables back in the 90s. Uh, those were really ugly, by the way. Um, Rosalind Picard, which is the chief scientist of our, of our company, was studying autism and especially studying emotions on uh, autistic kids. Um, she's the inventor of affective computing, which is the science relating emotional response to physiological signals. So understanding how people are feeling from the body. So she was studying the autistic kids and uh, one of the students asked to borrow two sensors which are similar to the one I'm wearing uh, for Christmas um, to, to monitor his little kid. And after a week, Ros, uh, Rosalind saw that one of the sensors seemed to be broken. Um, it was wearing on both wrists. And uh, what happens is that the nervous system maps in different way on the left side and the right side. So the right side seemed to be broken. In reality, what, what happened was that the device was working very well but the, the little kid was having a seizure, and nobody knew about it because it was during the night. And so from this little discovery, we found out that some of the body signals that are related to the activity of the nervous system can tell you something about epilepsy, which is a big problem. Today, it's one of the m world's most common brain diseases, and uh, there's no cure. And many people don't even respond well to, to, f to pharmaceuticals. So this is a big problem, and it took us quite some time to work on it, and uh, we had to start from, from far back. Um, the first thing you need is, is the sensor that at the time weren't quite sophisticated, and then you need to know what's happening from the data in order to give some help. So we started with the first uh, problem, and uh, we, we designed this device, which is called E3. We now have a new model that is called E4, and it's the, mm, it's the smallest top quality device for doing clinical studies in hospitals and universities. And um, it has some sensors that you've seen in other wearables, I believe, but um, the quality is not quite the same. And um, the reason is, is that the people who really need to do high quality studies and need to publish papers and need to do stuff in the hospitals with people that are sick, they need top quality stuff. They don't need like um, interpolations of the, on the data. So we provide to uh, some of the top scientists and researchers uh, in the world, and e even if we didn't start looking to solve a problem for researchers, um, we, we've accomplished this. But we, we still have the problem that I was talking about before. And so today, if you live for, with epilepsy, you have no way to know when a seizure is going to happen. And even, um, even unless you have someone with you in the room, there's no way that someone can help you. So you need something that sees what's going on in real time. And um, we, we did the research uh, in some of the top hospitals in the US. And uh, we showed that with the sensor set that we got in our device, we could see when seizures were happening in real time. And we could do it better than anything else that was there on the market. And uh, this research um, has been published, has been replicated, has been published in some of the um, serious journals that are available for research. And, um, so we, we solved the second problem, the data analytics. Uh, we still need to provide some help to these people. And um, this is a video that will show it what we came up with. Thanks. 
so you can see this is the embrace. Uh, we call it like that because of the problem we were trying to solve. You can see the you can see it here. Um, it doesn't have a fancy uh, LED screen. It tells you the time, and it, it has a ring of LEDs that illuminates when a, an alert is going on. Uh, and uh, this is what it has inside the internal sensors. And it's pretty small for what, for what it does, also considering that nothing else does the same things. And it's a medical quality device. Um, what it does primarily is helping caregivers, families, loved ones, friends, they live with someone uh, that has epilepsy to know when something unexpected is going on so that they might intervene. And a lot of people die each year because of this, because nobody is there to intervene in time. So it does that in real time, and um, it can help you get some help very quickly. This is not the only thing that it does. I mean, it, it gives you alert, but it gives you alert also on things that you care about, which might not be only seizures. Um, in fact, the same signals that let us see the seizures, which is a super uh, intensive activity in the nervous system, let you, lets you see other things that are uh, of minor intensity in the nervous system, like emotions, fear, anxiety, stress, relaxation, if you slept well or not. And I'm not talking about the like REM, uh, non-REM sleep. I'm talking the, the sleep storms that lead to, to memory consolidation in the brain. So you can have a diary that tells you how your activities are affecting your day. And if you have enough energy to get by to the end of the day, you can also share these activities with someone else that has an embrace. This vibrates, and uh, you can share the same experience with a loved one, your partner or your child, even if you don't have epilepsy. And what we did, though, was trying to design a medical quality wearable so that it could be used in the hospital, so for something like threatening, but it could also be beautiful. And um, we didn't just stop there. We thought that many people cannot afford these devices because they're just expensive. Usually, they're just for rich early adopters like us in the room. No offense, but it's true. And so we thought about partnering with someone that takes care of these families. And uh, what we did was that for each early adopter, or so he, he claims, that buys one device, we'll give one to a child that suffers from, from epilepsy and they cannot afford the device. And we're doing this right now because we launched our Indiegogo campaign um, a few hours ago, it's going well. I don't know the numbers now. I hope it's much better than that. Um, I, I think I think we'll we'll be doing well because many people need this device today. And um, but we're very proud that we're able to share this this innovation with people that cannot afford the technology. And it's not something that you hear much in in technology anyway. And so what I'd like you to um, to do if, you, if you're interested in this topic, if you care about wearables, if, if you care about people that really suffer, that don't just want to monitor their steps during the day, but that might risk your life, to take a look at the page. And if you like it, you can share it or contribute it. And uh, for every watch like this that you'll buy, a child will have one, and uh, you'll probably have a better lifestyle because of that. Thank you. <laughs>